Welcome to Grove Presbyterian Church's online service, and Happy Mother's Day. Although we're not able to meet face to face, we hope that you will lift up your prayers and ask the Holy Spirit to come into all of our hearts as we worship God and listen for his word for us. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 71. God alone is our refuge and hope, our shelter and protection. From our very first breath to our last, God's love and compassion never fails. Let's worship God together. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Give us open and welcoming hearts to receive your truth in faith and love. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture for today comes from Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 1 through 9. Starting in verse 1. The sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. Listen, my son. Listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer. Lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I'm going to incorporate the New Testament reading as part of the sermon today because it fits, uh, fits very nicely. But first, I want to talk about the Old Testament scripture we just read. It's from a king. We're told his name is Lemuel. He was sharing the wisdom that his mother taught him. And it's not just don't do it, but this is why you don't do it. Now, the reason I chose this passage is because it shows me that even very powerful people will readily admit the influence their mothers had on them and that their advice is still relevant, irrelevant, even when they've reached what may be the pinnacle of their life or of their career. Now, we don't know much about King, King Lemuel other than what we just read in Proverbs. The name Lemuel, it means for God or devoted to God. Based on this one passage attributed to Lemuel, we know that Lemuel was a king. He had a wise mother and he wrote some poetry. Many scholars think that Lemuel is actually King Solomon. Maybe Lemuel was a pet name that his mother had for him. If that's the case, his mother would have been Bathsheba. Another theory is that Lemuel is Hezekiah. A third theory is that Lemuel and his mother are fictional characters created by Solomon as a picture of what an, of an ideal king and a queen mother. The counsel from King Lemuel from his mother is good advice for any leader. She warns Lemuel not to fall into the trap of immorality. Chasing after women will sap a king's strength. Then she warns her son against the dangers of alcohol. A drunken king is never a good king. A ruler who craves beer and wine will pervert justice and act lawlessly. Finally, King Lemuel's mother instructs her son about the necessity of true justice. She says, 
Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. May the Lord grant us many rulers like King Lemuel who heed this advice of a queen mother on how to rule well. Now, while I think those verses say a lot to us and warrant an entire sermon probably devoted just to that passage, that's not where I want to focus today. You see, while I was reading through the book of Romans, something jumped right out at me. Doesn't that happen to all of us from time to time? To time? You look at a scripture passage that you've read many times before, and all of a sudden, you realize something you've never seen before. Well, that's what happened to me. This particular passage I want to talk about in Romans 16 is full of greetings from Paul to people he knows in Rome. It reads something like the begats, and I'm sure many of us just gloss over it most of the time. I'm going to start with verse 3 of Romans 16. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who was the first convent, convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Epinetus, probably Paul's first convert. Now, if Epinetus was in Rome, Paul certainly couldn't forget to send greetings to him. Then he goes on, greet Mary who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ and my dear friend, Stachus, greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Her Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. You see what I mean about the begats? You can just fly right through these. Greet Trephena and Trifosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Now, there were a lot of women who took on leadership roles in the early church. But now we come to the part that I just reached out and grabbed me. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Now, did you catch that? His mother, who has been a mother to me too. Now, we're pretty sure we know who Rufus was. If we look at Mark, chapter 15, verse 31, we read, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. So Rufus was the son of Simon from Cyrene, the man who helped carry the cross to the top of Golgotha to the crucifixion. His mother, Rufus's mother, was the wife of the man who helped carry that cross. Now let your imagination go with me here for a minute. Jesus had stumbled on the way up to Golgotha. Simon of Cyrene is pressed into service, and just as Simon begins to lift the cross from Jesus' hands, their eyes meet. At that moment, Simon knows who, 
what Jesus is. After getting to the top, Simon sticks around. He sees how Jesus is treated. He witnesses the crucifixion. Then Simon goes home and tells his wife and sons what happened. After the resurrection, after the Pentecost, and maybe even as a result of Paul's evangelism, they become Christians. But Paul says she was like a mother to him. We don't know her name, but she had a profound effect on Paul. Maybe she consoled him when he was feeling down. Maybe she fed him, doctored or nursed him when he was sick. Maybe he just helped him in his understanding of Christ's forgiveness. Now picture this. You know, Paul never does voice an apology or any disgust for the way he persecuted, persecuted Christians before his conversions. Yes, he acknowledges it and even uses it as an example of Christ's forgiveness and even of our most egregious sins, but he never asked for forgiveness. Not that we have a record of, anyhow. Suppose Paul voiced his sorrow in private, in the presence of his other mother. She didn't have firsthand knowledge of the events of the crucifixion, but maybe she consoled Paul something like this. Paul, you know that Jesus forgives all. By Simon told me that even when he was dying, he called out to God and asked him to forgive all those people that were killing him. He said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. If Jesus could forgive them, I'm sure he's already forgiven you. But isn't that what mothers do? Even mothers who are not our mothers, they wipe our tears. They instruct us. They protect us. They care for us. Even if a person is not your biological mother, they can still be a mother to you. That's what Paul said. His mother, who has been a mother to me too. We've all known women like this, and men too. For sometimes men also need to fill the role of mom. People who selfless, selflessly give of themselves for the benefit of others. Many of them are our mothers and grandmothers. Some are people that we refer to as our second mothers. Some have never been mothers officially, but fill that role when someone needs a steadying hand or a shoulder to cry on or just a good role model. We have many people like that in our church. We've also seen them throughout our daily walks of life. They're all around us. You know, in Great Britain, they don't celebrate Mother's Day. They have Mothering Day, a day to celebrate all those people who fill the role as needed. It's not about being a mother. It's about mothering. I read of a mother of four with a fifth child on the way. One day, her three-year-old was constantly underfoot. She was having a tough time getting anything done. She said, he was on my heels no matter where I went. Whenever I stopped to do something and turned back around, I would trip over him. Several times she patiently suggested that he find some fun things to do someplace else. But he says, oh, that's all right, Mommy. I'd rather be in here with you. After a while, she asked him why he was acting this way. She says, he looked at me with 
great big eyes and said, well, mommy, in Sunday school, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps, but I can't see him, so I'm walking in yours. That's what mothering is. Whether a person's a biological mother, an adoptive mother, a surrogate mother, a second mother, or even a mother figure. Mothering is all about being a witness to Jesus Christ, to those around you, to those that look up to you, and to those who trust you. Today is the day we set aside each year to honor our mothers and those who have mothered us. If you still have these people in your lives, take some time to reach out to them. Give them a call. Send them a text message, an email. Make sure they know that they're special to you on this particular day. But don't only honor them today. Honor them always, every day. Let us pray. Lord, you are to be glorified. All creation rejoices at your majesty and extols your virtue. All we have to do is look around us every day and we see your hand in everything in this world. Thank you for our families and our friends and particularly for our mothers and those who have been like mothers to us. We stand before you knowing that we are not worthy of all you have done for us. We ask that you be with all of those in this world who are suffering because of the virus that is attacking unsuspecting victims. Some are ill, some have family members who are ill, some have died. Even more are suffering as a result of the measures that are necessary to slow this thing down and hopefully stop it. Extend your hand of mercy and love to all. We also know that there are others who are suffering from other physical and emotional afflictions and those who are grieving at this time. Bring healing and peace to all of those. We offer these praises, thanks, and supplications, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Excuse me. Now, as we've been doing recently, since we don't have a choir, um, I'm going to read uh, Count Your Many Blessings. I uh, was looking for something appropriate for today, and when we think about mothers, oftentimes we think about blessings. So, when upon life's billows you are, temp, temp, you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, they, I can't do it this way. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you were called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven nor your home on high. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Sorry, I went.
when I got the reading that I found I couldn't do it without doing it at the correct tempo. I recently saw a quote the well-known Christian author A.W. Tozier wrote, and he says, quote, Keep a Christian from entering the church sanctuary, and you have not in the least bit hindered his worship. We carry our sanctuary with us. We never leave it, unquote. Now, although Reverend Tozier would have been about 20 years old during the Spanish flu pandemic, I don't know if the quote was referring to those times or not, but it serves us well today. Remember that you carry your sanctuary with you. Live in gratitude for the many blessings that you have been given and love, love one another from six feet away and with a mask on. You can still smile with your eyes and let the light of Jesus shine through you. Have you noticed when you do get at the chance to get out, you can tell when a person is smiling, even when their smile is all covered up. Every day, but especially at times like these, let our Christianity unite us to care for one another. Use your creativity to love and support one another. Live honorably as the children of God and the citizens of heaven that we already are. We are all in this together. Now, may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit go with you and be with you today and the rest of your life. Amen.